Hey guys, and welcome to part four of how to paint a Blight King. So today we're going to be looking at um, secondary details. And you can see there's a lot of paint in front of me, uh, so there's a bit to go through. Uh, this section is probably going to be done over uh, two videos, so uh, the next part as well will also be doing details, those secondary details, but um, we'll see how far we get today. But I thought I'd, I'd just put all, all the paints in front of me here so you can sort of see the um, the, the different things we're going to be doing um, over the next two weeks. So uh, to start with, today we're going to be focusing mainly on um, the the axe, the metals like the chainmail there, definitely getting those uh, to a finished state, uh, minus tarnishes and things like that. As I've said with the skin and the armor, we're going to leave that off till the end so we can tie it all in together. But we're definitely going to work on the metals today and, and get them up to a, a good a good finish. And um, at the very least, we're going to go through and base color the other areas and the other colors just to get them ready. Um, and we'll see how far we get. We'll probably do the, um, the wooden um, handle on, on the axe as well, just to finish that off. So we'll, we'll try to concentrate on that and the chain mail. And um, yeah, and then also obviously um, start on the base and, and, and put um, at least an undercoat down on that. Um, if you're doing a different style of base, don't worry about that. But um, if you're doing something, if you want to do it in the same style as what I'm doing, then we'll definitely be painting that black just to start with so we can prep that for um, when we when we dry brush it up, um, just, to, just to begin that process. But let's get into the, the colors because we have a lot to go through. <clears throat> so first off for the metals, um, we're going to be throwing a little bit of this um, brass underneath. You could use anything. Um, I'm just using this particular one because that's what I've got here. But um, probably even a little bit dark one would be good. I'll probably be adding a little bit of black to this just to darken it down a bit. Something sort of like a dark tin or a yeah, dark brass, something like that. Um, we'll be using that like as an undertone. And then um, we're going to be moving through just your standard sort of metals. So lead belcher here. Um, we've got some iron breaker and uh, let's see what we've got here and some stormhouse silver. But basically you use any any combination of tiered uh, steps of, um, of metals, just something from a dark to light. <clears throat> so we have a bit of a bit of range to, to make the um, the axe here stand out on those edges and so on. There's a lot of pock marks and, and holes in it, so we want to want to highlight those up. And um, then we've got also um, some washes. So we've got some uh, null and oil here. We've got uh, some uh, the seraphim sepia tone. And we've got, which is like a mid-tone brown uh, ink shade. We've got some agrax here, just in case we need it to darken it down. And that's going to be mainly for the, the metals to stain them and give you like an oily, an oily black brown uh, stain, which is really nice. Um, and then in addition for the metals, um, which is going to end up going on a lot of other things as well, we've got our, our our ink washes here, which we used on the skin and a little bit on the armor. So we've got the yellow here, um, right there. We've got the purple. There we go. We've got the uh, magenta, okay, and we've got that blue as well. So we're probably going to bring some of these um, glazing into um, the metal everywhere, basically, to help give a unified um, hole to the to the model and, and and make all those colors move across. Um, as I've said before, much like you see in a in a master painting, um, if you have a look at a let's say a portrait, um, the colors that are in the skin, you'll often find those. Uh, flecked and blended in in around the clothing and the other areas of the painting uh, and that that helps just uh, unify and, and give everything a harmonious um, whole in terms of the color palette and that's what we're trying to do here and uh, Nurgle uh, or chaos in general is a great place to um, play around with this type of concept um, so moving on we've got the all the bone areas so the on, on the shoulder pad there the skulls and so on we're going to be using um, some bone colors so I've got some uh, a dark brown here which is kind of like a um, I guess these are like the really old school graveyard earth so some sort of like slightly desaturated um, you know brown tone uh, they're, they're really great for doing as a base for um, for bone colors and then we've got uh, the Ushabti and I've, I've brought in some of this lighter um, screaming skull for um, some highlights as well and that'll be good for that and then finally we've got this little bit of um, cloth here and we're going to be um, doing that with some greys so the same grey we used on the skin which is this one here and then blend it up probably using the screaming skull but we'll get to that later so that's pretty much where we're, where we're ready to go um, I'll set up again and we're going to begin on, on the metals okay so to begin with we're going to start with 
the um, dark brass color. So I'm going to mix a tiny bit of black with this. If you've got a similar tone, then yeah, I would mix a little bit of black as well. We just want a little bit darker than this, um, this base tone metal here. So we just bring a little bit across on our palette and a little tiny bit of that black in and we'll just see what we get here. So we're just looking for something just a little darker, a little bit more deep in color. Just to give us something we're going to work with that isn't um, quite so bright. There we go. Mix a bit of water with it, about a drop or so. Doesn't have to be too thick, it can be thin. Okay, draw it off. That looks about where we want it. So you can use like a large brush or just something that's not too, um, you know, not too precious. We're just doing metals and it's on a large area. So, you know, we don't have to be too worried about <clears throat> how, um, how neat we are. Get some on the India brush, twirl it off to get the, the point back and we should be ready to go. So let's just test it out and see how we go. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So basically you just want to come through and um, base coat this whole thing. You might need a second coat um, depending on how how thin your paint is or what brand you're using. But you just want a nice even coat there um, just to give a nice dark brass color to begin with. And then um, on these little chainmail areas um, with most of the paint off the brush, like after you sort of paint a little bit there, then come across and just give it a good um, brushing. So it's almost like a dry brush. So you actually want to leave a little bit of those blacks and, and stuff like that inside of those chainmail links just to start with the shadows. So this is kind of, this is called a wet brush. Um, so similar to a dry brush, but you've got more paint on, but you don't want to do it when you first load it up, do your, your, um, your main area here. And then when the brush is a little bit uh, less full of paint, then just brush that across the surface and you'll get a nice finish. So it'll be a nice, it'll be a heavier style, but it won't be rough like with a dry brush. So you're going to get a smoother consistency of the paint. And um, on these little little um, discs we've got, we're going to paint those with this as well, because they're going to end up probably a bit more of a brassy color. So we'll, um, we'll paint those. Okay. And so on and on the back there. So I'll come back when that's done and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so first step, we're going to uh, begin with our dark metal color. So we'll bring some across here on the palette, mix some water in, okay, just to thin it down. And we're gonna be doing a similar technique to what we've done on the armor. So we're gonna be streaking and doing, building up colors in these lines. You could do these steps as a dry brush if you wanted to, but um, if you followed along with this tutorial and you've um, gotten to the point where you've uh, done this streaky method on, on the armor, um, have a go at doing this with the, with the metals. So we come across here and we're gonna start with, let's say the top edge here. So this is where it's gonna be hitting most of the light and we're just going to be bringing that down. We're going to cover most of this, um, this axe and bring these streaky patterns down into this, sort of coming down and across the flats. You can vary the direction, making sure you've got a line edge on, on the edges so it's nice and bright. Um, you want to leave some of this, this darker brassy color. So we can come in here into these undersides of all the little pock marks and just dot those in with some of these darks here. At this stage, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just streaking it across, similar to the wet brush on, on the chain mail. You don't, you don't have to worry too much. You can just run it across like I'm doing there. We want mostly uh, metal with just a hint of this, this stain underneath the, the brass coming through. And so we're just bringing that across, lining in all the lines are relatively thick at this point and you're just bringing those colors in so that we end up with something that looks a bit like on the top there. So we're getting that metal and that's going to give us enough area to start highlighting up with the other colors. And when you're coming across on the, on the flat blade here, we're going to run these streaks in this direction. Okay. If you can imagine an ax chopping down, you're going to get those streaks coming up the blade, up the edge. So we're going to run it that way. So it sort of simulates, um, the axes in use. Okay, even though it is very rusted out, you know, a Nurgle blade, but it is still in use with uh, paying more attention to the edge here to be um, brighter than the, um, 
the spot where it turns uh, the plane. So this, this edge here is going to be dark and this side here is going to be the lighter. Um, and so that's how we're going to do it. We're not doing like a full realism thing where the light is coming from above and we're going to do, you know, um, spots, uh, um, you know, a bright spot where your eye is hitting it. We're not going to go that far with this. This is a bit more stylized and a little bit more of a, um, I guess, a more, yeah, more unrealistic um, impression. Um, which I think ultimately probably works better for a Nurgle model so that you can be a bit more um, hyper real with it. And so I'm just going to come down and do that across there. On these uh, chainmail pieces, we're just going to do that wet brushing again. Okay, and now you can leave a little bit of that chain wherever you feel it's nice to have some of that rust showing through. Okay, some of that darker tone and build that up. And then when we're coming across onto these onto these um, discs, we're going to use a different color. So leave the discs out if you've got those on your model um, or some other area that's brass. We're going to leave that. Um, and we may actually do this little guy here as brass. So if you've got one of these on your model, then um, probably leave that as well. So I'm going to come and finish this off in the chainmail and I'll be back with in, in a second. Okay, so we're back. Um, so moving into the, I guess, mid-tone now, which is, we're going to start doing that as our kind of highlight tone um, or, you know, um, layer tone. We're going to be using this middle one here, which I believe is uh, the Iron Breaker or whichever uh, metallic you're using. I've moved down to a, a smaller brush now. So we're going to be doing finer streaks and finer, uh, I guess, elements. And this is preparing for the ink washes. If we put the ink wash on now, we're, gonna, we're not going to get enough contrast um, across the metals. So we want to we want to just build it up a little bit stronger so we can see some variety. So we're running that across the edge and getting that nice sharp um, lights. Okay, do all your edges first. That's a good idea just to establish where the light is going to be on on some of these broader spots. It'll make your life easier. And then you can come in with some streaks into the center. And at this stage, it's not like you don't have to be super uh, controlled with this. You can let, let your brush wander and, 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 and pick out little areas that you like or don't like, um, leave them darker. You know, you can just play around with it and, and slowly build up some nice, nice variety. This is a, a rusted blade with a ton of little nicks and notches in it. It's going to glint light in all kinds of little spots and places. Um, and then that's going to help in the final when we put all of our little drips and so on on. We're going to get a really nice variation of, of um, darks to lights, colors, and so on. We're going to be staining this a few different colors. So we're going to see some of that, um, I guess, uh, influence of chaos uh, on, the, on the metal, which is one of the, the fun things about uh, doing you know, chaos stuff is that you get to play around with those those ideas, and that's um, that's really cool. So we want to we want to make sure we get a bit of that going. So again, we're going to do that across there, and on the on the chainmail areas, you're just going to be brushing that brush across again, hitting the very raised spots now, just on the, on the tops, okay, just like you did with the wet brushing, but a little bit less this time, just to make it shine a little bit. And I'll come back when I've done that one. All right, so let's have a look. So that's now ready for the ink wash stage. We're just going to bring up these little brass uh, discs underneath if you've got some brass on your model. So now we're going to use that straight brass rather than the, the darker one. We'll just bring it across to the side of the palette and just twirl off the brush. And we're just going to now start highlighting this up. So you can decide on how much uh, light you want on, on these brass bits. But um, I would say, you know, maybe if it's hanging like this, just around the edge, maybe leave a little bit of darkness in the center, or you could light it from above if you wanted to. Um, because there's not a, it's under, it's underneath the model here. Um, we're not going to see much from above, so I'm sort of just simulating some maybe some bounce light from the ground, and doing it more towards the bottom, just so that you can see it. When this model's on the table, you're not really going to notice these that much, but if you see them, you'll see the the bottom edge of that disc. So I'm just streaking up a little bit of that, that color there just to give a bit of variety as you can see there. So a little bit of shadow in the centers and towards the top and a bit more brightness around the base. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do that on the top there. And um, then after that, I'll just show you now, we'll get a little bit of this silver here and bring that into the side and create a, a slightly brighter tone. And we're gonna just highlight the edges. So with your fine brush, you just run it around the edge like that, 
and create a nice sharp little little highlight and that's going to just make these things pop this sort of bright color so when we throw the ink wash on we'll still see some of that bright tone coming through and we can re-highlight up after if we want to if we want to get that really shining or we want to leave those dark and, and and less visible that all depends on on your aesthetics like what you'd like to see we don't want that to be a focal point so we want that to be a little bit more dull back so we may not highlight it up again but we'll see what it looks like once the, the ink washes are on so i'm going to go and do the little brooch thing on his on his armor there and um, then we'll be ready for the ink wash stage all right, so we're back and we're ready for the ink. So to begin with, um, I've done this uh, tutorial before with um, uh, doing oily metal. If you look on my channel, there's a, um, an early video there on um, how to do uh, metallic armor for a space marine. And it's very much the same process here. So we're gonna use this nice mid-tone brown. You don't want anything too dark. We don't gonna use the, the Agrax here because it's gonna stain this a bit too dark and we're not gonna get that uh, variety in tones. So that's why I suggest using something that's a little bit lighter that's gonna give you um, a bit more variety and we want to see those browns coming through because this is a rusted, a rusted blade. So we're going to use this with a little bit of water, the seraphim there. We don't want it too um, rich in pigment, so we just use a little bit of water to dilute it down. Okay, this is more of a glaze wash than, than a heavy wash. We just want to see some browns showing through. And then we're going to brush that over the surface. And you'll see instantly on your model that it's just going to uh, enrich in all those little recesses and the brass that's underneath it's going to lift that as well it's going to saturate it it's going to give it a deeper look and we just basically go over the entire area uh, and get a nice good coverage and build that up so you can start seeing those browns coming through so i'm going to do that across everywhere so that includes the brass areas as well and the chainmail and i'll be back in a second all right so we're back and that uh, brown wash should have pretty much dried. It doesn't matter if it's still a little bit wet in places, that's totally fine. But you can see it's giving a little bit more depth there for some of those recesses, just making everything feel a bit richer, you know. It's a nice technique this. So now we're gonna move on to the black. So we mix a little bit of water with that too. We don't want this to go straight on. The nullin oil will dominate everything and you'll lose a lot of those lovely browns and uh, var varying colors in there. So we don't want that. Uh, we just wanna further darken and give that oily look because that's, that's um, it, it just very satisfying. It's a, it's a richer, deeper shadow. So um, the same thing that we did before, we're just going to um, basically wash this across, the, across all of the metal areas. So we just pop it on and you're instantly gonna see like just everything come alive. It's gonna all start to get uh, nice and rich and great. You just, it's uh, like magic really, this type of thing. You're gonna see some little subtle variations in the way that black mixes with the brown underneath. You're gonna see um, lots and lots of little, little changes across the surface and it should look really cool. So the same way we're gonna come across here. Um, for the brassy areas, you don't have to do those now. You can leave those just for the metal ones. So the chain mail and the ax, um, we can leave that, uh, that brass as is. That should be totally fine. If you feel that it's still a little, a little bit um, not dark enough in some areas, then I would go back with the brown or even get your Agrax out, a darker brown, and use a bit of that wash to help darken those areas rather than using the black. Because that's that's gonna bring it too close to the metal. We wanna have some separation of color so that those brass areas do read as brass rather than like another version of um, rusted metal. So I'm gonna go through and just finish that off and I'll be back in a second. All right, so all the ink is basically dry now. And again, it doesn't matter if there's a few spots where it's still drying, you can definitely start. So we're going to do the final highlights now. So much like with the armor, we're gonna do some nice uh, streaky methods. So we're gonna need a fine detail brush for that one. And we're gonna get this uh, silver here. And we're gonna bring up some nice little fine highlights. So we don't want this to go all over because it'll be too shiny, but we just want the very edges. So we're gonna start on, on the edge. Now, if you're doing an edge highlight like this, you know, you get the, the side of the brush, the flat side of the brush, uh, just past the, the, the tip of the brush, and you just run it um, coming down, if you can see that. So you're doing the edge, the edge of the ax or the edge of the, of the model that you're doing to the flat side, and you're gonna run it down. 
and that will give you that nice sharp edge highlight and we're just going to very gently caress that edge and give us a nice sharp little highlight but we don't necessarily want it to be all the way down or all the way along we're just giving some nice little sharp edges and glints of light just to make this thing pop a little more okay and we'll start to bring some of these down so this is like little scratches and little little marks and little um I guess stains and and um, areas undulations on the on the model where it's you know uneven and we're getting those little streaks so you can vary this up you can do like little scratches like that where you just run a little scratch little dot maybe a few little dots here and there and we're just going to slowly build up some some damage here um, and and the combination of all this will read as metal so on all of these little undersides here we want to make sure we get the um, all these little circles we get that underside there that's where the light is going to is going to is going to hit this um, especially if it's metal even if it's rusted it's going to have a few little glints of light now a lot of this is going to get covered up by the um, you know by all the little dribbly bits and uh, nurgles um, you know fun stuff uh, but you know we want to at least uh, put as many of these down as we can because not everywhere is going to have a drip or, a, or a, um, another color coming out of those those little um, pock marks we're going to have some areas that stay as they are and so we want to see some light hitting across it so just uh, follow some of the the little patterns that you already have in the surface these little lines and streaks and so on and just give it a little bit of tarnish here and there highlight sorry um, just to build that up and so we're just going to keep working this across this here um, so if you can see that just to start building that up mostly paying attention to the edges where it's going to be worn and you're going to get some of that brightness coming through now we'll just do this uh, the edge of the blade here so you can see how that's done so we come down with this edge highlight Ooh, is that in focus yep and uh, just come down the edge here and give us something to work with so we have a nice bright edge okay and we can we can play some streaks off the edge of that in a minute and we'll give it a little bit of a edge highlight just on the edge of the blade there like that just you can also run it this way if you like across the flat Okay, just like that. Uh, maybe turn the model upside down here and just run it. So we get that nice little glint of light. Whoop, just wipe that off. There we go. Okay, and we can blend that in in a second. So if you have your little marks like that, that's fine. If you quickly wipe them, they'll be good. So we'll we'll play on that and add a little bit of um, a little bit of stain here. I might just see if I can soften that out a bit with some of our dark tone here. So I might just pop a little bit of that in there. There we go. Just lessen that a little. That's it. And then we'll run some streaks over it. So yeah, back to the silver again, and we're gonna run those, those little marks. So we just come down like this and vary the, the length of them. And you're just running it down to create that, that edge. Okay, so you're going to run through and do all that. Um, do a little bit of a soft brush across these chain links, just on the very raised areas to give you some little um, lights there. Not too much though, keep this fairly subdued. And um, that should be good, I'll be back in a second. All right, so now that all of that is done, we need to, before we do any more staining or any more interesting colors, we need to get the um, the uh, the handle of this axe done so then we can come across and do a bunch of um, uh, ink washes and so on and we'll have to do the uh, the cloth as well well we might not get to that I don't know we'll see how far we get but we're definitely going to do the um, 
the axe handle and we'll do some staining into the metals and then we might do the base colors on the rest and leave that for next week. Um, so yeah, the first step is to establish that dark brown. So we're going to begin with some of this um, uh, Doomble brown, a little bit of black, and we'll uh, find a color that works for us, which is just going to be a little bit darker um, than what we have there. It's a bit too bright and, and red, and we don't want that to be clashing with anything. So I'll just dull that down a touch. And I might just add a little bit of our gray that we're using into that and we'll just see what kind of color we get. Now it will probably go a slight pinkish tone. So we'll just see how that, how that goes. Uh, that could be good. Maybe we'll mix. Now I've added in another color here. I'll just show you that, the Bella Brown. So just some mid uh, yellow brown there. And I'm just using that to control and possibly shift away from a, um, a uh, a pinkish tone so that might be how we do it just see what kind of color we can create yeah it's not looking too bad but I think it's still got a bit too much pink in it so we'll try just going back to the original concept and we'll start over here with a little bit of the black we'll build a dark tone brown and we'll start with that just to get a base color on. Okay, so just like when you're base coloring anything else, just straight on, a little bit of water mixed in with your paint, not too thick, and we'll just get this color on. So I'll come back once I've painted that, and we'll take a look at it. All right, so let's take a look. So with that nice dark brown, we've done the, the wood on the axe handle. And we've also done all of the straps. So anywhere that there's a little strap, we've also done that in that dark brown. Just to tie it together and put it across the model a little more. So it all feels like a unified um, whole, as I've said before with the other colors. We're going to bring them up everywhere we can. So um, for the highlights, we're going to use that Bella Brown mixed in with a little bit of this um, dark brown that we have. And build up, start building up a kind of yellowish tone. And that's what we're going to use to highlight it with a fine detail brush, mix in a little bit of water. We have a sort of a slightly dark yellowish tone. And you'll see that there's uh, sort of edges across the across the timber. And we're going to we're going to run with those and basically draw little tiny lines across. And just very carefully start highlighting up all those little edges and we can also um, run little streak marks through it like wood grain if you if you if you wish you don't have to do that but um, you know it helps just sell the idea that this is timber rather than just you know something that's brown so um, I'm going to run through there and just do all those little highlights and we'll come back for the next step all right so we've got the first highlight on and as you can see, just little streaky lines running down the length of the timber. And a little of that, that twirl look just on the end to, to simulate, you know, when you cut through a, a piece of timber, you get all the rings. So just to sort of simulate a little bit of that ring um, idea. And now it's just a simple case of just adding a little bit more of that Bella Brown to get your highlight. And we don't need to go up too bright on this, just um, enough to, to make that that work as wood. So um, you're just going to run across the top here, not not underneath, just across the top, this top area to light it. And um, that should be pretty good. So let's just have a go and see how it looks. In, yep, it's in focus. So we just run it. Unfortunately, there's no, um, there's no tricks here to doing this. This is just basically uh, very very thin little streaky lines making sure that you have a good consistency so um, by that I mean you need it wet enough so it draws off the end the, the tip of your brush but not thick enough so it's too too gluggy and chunky it needs to have some thinness but you can't have it so thin that um, it draws off too quick because then it will run everywhere. So it's a very tricky thing and it takes a while to get used to that. 
um, but we're just going to come through and highlight those edges and then probably we'll do one more so I'll show you the next step up so this is like an off Bella Brown like just a little bit brighter and we might just pick off some of these little glints and highlights here just to further set off that timber and I guess simulate that it's actually wet and that should be enough to give us the timber. We don't want that to stand out too much because the, the focus isn't the, the timber shaft of this axe. Um, if anything, it's the axe head, um, but more importantly, it's the, the main body of the character. So I'll go through and do that, and, um, and then we'll be on to doing some staining. Oh, actually, before that, we'll do the little, these little, um, I guess, um, it could be nails sticking out of the, um, or some kind of metal protrusions on the, out, on, on the, on the shaft of that axe. So basically just do those the same way that we've done uh, the axe head and the chain mail. So build them up with the, the dark brass, a little bit of the metal and then highlight it up and then um, give it a little bit of a brown and black ink wash um, and they'll be ready just on those little areas there just to give them some glint. So I'll do that as well off camera and once that's all done uh, we'll come back for the, the final staining of, of some of these areas to tie them in with the flesh and the armor. All right, now for the fun bit. So we've got our uh, inks in front of us. We're back to our, um, our uh, nightshade, the blue, the purple, the yellow, and the magenta. And we're gonna slowly bring a little bit of that into this uh, metal surface to add a little bit, and even onto the timber there as well. Um, so I think to begin with, we're probably gonna start with the, uh, the blue. I think that's a good place to begin. So we'll get a little bit of that out. Lots of water with it. This is a glaze now. It's going to be even lighter than when we did it with the, the brown and the and the black. So it's almost like dirty water almost. Very, very light. Okay, we don't want too much of this. And then we're just going to start to see how it looks. So we're going to start with probably, let's say, the pockmark areas first and see the way this stain is going to work. Wipe most of it off and just gently place it in. And let's just see the kind of reactions that we get across the surface and we're building up some little areas of shadow and green just very carefully moving it in you know we're not washing the entire model with this we're just adding these little spots of blues which will also go green and other colors as it mixes across the surface anywhere where you know you think looks good but it you know next to a highlight so if there's a highlight there you could just bring a little bit of that shadow in next to it we're just going to just slowly add in more and more just building up those tones across bring a little bit onto over the metal as well just to tint it slightly might bring a little touch more of the blue in we'll just see if we can get a little bit of that across the shadowed line of that that blade there. Make sure all those little pock marks get a nice good dose of it. And maybe just in there, shadow that up. That's good. Okay, so we're just going to start playing around with that. So on, on the, the chain mail as well. Okay, so we can start maybe at the top here. Just add a little bit into the top and maybe where the, where the fold turns, almost like cloth, like a shadow, throw a bit of that blue in there and that'll just start defining the various pieces of that chain mail and keep it towards the top because it'll make that darker and you'll get a nice light bit on the end. So, you know, this area, if this was a real guy, a uh, real Nurgle champion, I'm sure the area around the, the backside there is going to be the darkest. So we want to add a little bit of that dark in. You know, you got to please Papa Nurgle. He wants that nice darkness there. You know, that's where he gives all his blessings. So we want to see that. So it just helps to darken that up. So I'm going to go through and play around with that and we're going to bring a little bit onto uh, this timber here around where the where the disease is and the, the open wound. And we're just going to bring a little bit of that in 
further darken up all around in here and maybe around these areas of the the timber where the where the metal is just to help darken that even further and maybe at the base here okay so in around here all right and I'll bring you back when uh, this is all dry all right so let's have a look so it's a bit hard to tell on this video footage but there is actually those dark areas are actually starting to go a little blue and it's hard to see it's, it's very subtle but there is you can see that shadow happening on on that one but there is actually these little areas of blue and green just slowly coming through which is helping to deepen the overall effect and so we're going to now bring in let's um let's add and you can see it there on the timber it's a little bit darker around where the where the um the blood's coming out and that's helping to stain it i also streaked in a downward motion to help uh start to bring in some of those drips um just to just to uh you know uh start that process so let's bring in a little bit of maybe this red here so get a little bit of that with some of this water mixed in and we're just going to add a few areas of red so that'll be good on the on the the timber here so we can just add in some little stains just doing these little dots or streak patterns almost like um, so we are bringing a little bit of those dribbly bits in early because this area we're probably not going to touch again so you can definitely just start to bring in a little a few little areas of um, of red and darkness wherever you feel like just want to see a little bit of that that color okay so it's just very subtle but we're just adding a few areas of this color just to tie it in again give some of that you know this isn't skin but um, it still has the same level of, of, of color variety as anything else in real life you would actually see if you look very closely or you know you, you really look you'll see little flicks of other colors uh, coming through in various areas um, that's just something that happens so um, you know nothing is just one color so we want to bring a little tiny bit of that in with the red we want to be a little bit careful we don't want this to become overly red but we just want to add a few little areas that might look nice you know this is a magical blade essentially I mean it's being affected by chaos we want to see a little bit of that coming through That'd be really nice. Okay. And again, try not to go onto the raised areas too much. Just keep that towards the back end. Maybe a little bit on the edge, maybe where that could almost be dried blood or something like that. Maybe a little bit down there. Just to add a little bit of redness in spots. But being a little bit more careful not to over overdo the red. Just adding little tiny flicks of red just to tie this in together and we start to see some variety and so then finally we want to bring in some purple or possibly even the yellow as well so let's just have a little play around with that nice and thin not too much and we'll just start adding in a few little areas of purple You know, streaking it like it's uh, dripping, maybe off the some of these these little areas there. Throwing a bit of this purple where there's shadow, basically anywhere where you're going to see more shadowing, more um, spots of deeper areas. You know, this purple will blend and mix, and you'll get some nice uh, darker shadows appearing. Okay. So come across and do that. So um, I'll go there and, and play around with that. I'll just show you what the yellow looks like. And this is just, you're just doing this to taste. This is like the salt and pepper in a, in a, in a stew. You know, you're just adding little tiny areas of color that you think look cool. So we're gonna add a little bit of yellow in here. And the yellow and the purple could easily come across onto this. 
Um, a bit too much yellow there. Very careful with the yellow because the yellow is going to dominate a lot. So just be careful with that one. But just add some little flicks of color and um, and on the chainmail as well. The yellow will look really nice on the chainmail. That'll that'll give a nice um, a nice look. But I'll go around and play around with that, and you do that on your model, and um, then we'll come to the last stage. All right. So let's take a look. So you can start to see it there. This video will show a little bit. You can see the yellow definitely. But there's a lovely play of purple. Just as you turn it, you see this little bit of purple mostly around this area here. Um, and there's a little bit of blue still left in there. Um, yeah, this is great. This is, this is the fun bit, you know. And it really does help uh, tie the axe head um, into the flesh and into the body, the main body. You know, you're just seeing these colors. Um, when we put the final tarnishes on, we're definitely going to try to use possibly a little bit of that sort of um, that uh, that sort of bluish staining that you get on on brass and so on, and 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 those kinds of uh, things uh, onto the axe. That'll help bring that color across onto here. That'll be really great. Maybe even some oranges and so on. And so we're going to get a really lovely um, blend of colors. Um, yeah, it's working really nicely. And in the timber as well, it's much more subtle, but you can see these little flicks of reds and purples um, just in there. It just you know, it's a small thing, but um, it really helps sell the, the, the final figure. And um, if this was your character or something, you definitely want to do that. You might dumb down the technique a, a little bit on your regular troops. Uh, with something like Black Kings, um, there's so few of them in an army, as far as I know, anyway, the points are quite high, that um, I haven't played with them yet. But, you know, you're probably not going to have a lot of them anyway, so you can spend more time on each one and give them that that little bit of attention because it's definitely going to help um, and they're going to look really cool. So the final step today, we're, we're done on the painting now for all of this um, and that's really cool. The only things left to do are the cloth and the bone areas um, and the base um, to start that off um, and then the final skin and, and you know tarnishes but today we're just going to set up for next week so we're going to put a base color down onto um, onto the bone and we're going to put uh, the base color onto the cloth and paint the base black so that we're ready we're ready for that so um, I'm going to use this sort of darker brown here for all the bone areas and I'm going to mix in a small amount of grey here um, with the black um, to create a, a base tone for the a base layer for the for the cloth. So I'm not going to show you that now. Mixing that up, you can choose whatever secondary color you want, but I would just choose a color that's not going to clash too heavily. A neutral color is not going to clash too heavily with the the bright green and so on that you and the, and the flesh tones. You know, you could do like a like a crimson red, maybe a dark red that would look nice as well. But I don't want to have a third color in here um, trying to grab your attention away from this uh, top area. So I'm sticking with a nice neutral color. So I'll set that up and paint that and paint the base black and when we come back we'll, I'll, I'll give you my final thoughts on um, this week's adventures and um, yeah hopefully that should all look really cool all right and let's have a look at the final product so there we go we've done the axe there's nice little colors in there we've done the metals chainmail I've blacked out the base prepared those the cloth there on both sides We've done the brassy bits, and I've um, prepared all the bone areas with the that sort of uh, darker yellow brown, desaturated brown. Done all the staining. So yeah, we're in a really good position. So next week we'll be looking at um, finishing off the cloth and the bone areas, and um, most likely we're going to dry brush up the base um, and, and get all that going as well. And depending on how long that takes, um, we might begin on the flesh, but I might leave that for another week and, and do that as its own thing because we still have to build up some highlights and some colors to blend in all those little uh, glazes that we did. And obviously the straps there as well. Um, and then the final, final thing will be bringing in all of the dribbly bits and all of the tarnishes and the staining and all that stuff um, to finalize it. And we'll probably bring some of that kind of staining and so on into the base as well. So we'll see how we go. I think we've got at least another two more um, parts to this series, um, but it's looking really cool. Um, as I said, this is more what you would do for your character. Um, you probably wouldn't do this across um, all of your models, but um, if you if you're just doing a few and you want to you want to really make them pop, this type of uh, these types of techniques um, are pretty cool, and you can you can definitely speed up and get this going really fast. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this is uh, helping uh, with your own painting and hobby projects. 
And um, if you do like it, please subscribe and hit that notify button and all that stuff because it really does help me out. Uh, but otherwise, there'll be an overview at the end which will show the colors as usual. Um, and yeah, have a great day and I'll catch you on the next one.